quick look at one of my favorite defensive prospects that projects to go in the mid first round that I believe has true top pairing potential, Keandre Miller. He spent the year playing for the U18 US national team development program and posted 9 goals and 20 assists in 58 games. At 6'3", but really more like 6'4", 6'5", on skates and 206 pounds, Miller should honestly not be as agile as he is, and this is why I think he is such a fascinating prospect. So much emphasis is placed on speed in today's NHL, with McDavid and Barzell carving up opposing teams, and an expansion team built on speed, making it all the way to the cup finals. Smaller, highly skilled players that can play with speed are in fashion, and defenses have had to scramble to keep up. It is so important now for D-men to not only be able to defend against speed, but to also jump up in the rush and attack with speed. With Keandre's insane athleticism, he is able to do just that. At 6'3", he skates like he's 6 foot, and you can already imagine what that allows him to do all over the ice. The former high school football star utilizes his quickness to keep up with the speed of an attack, and because of that size, he is adept at containing and eliminating the puck carrier. He is very good at breaking up plays at the blue line due to his long reach and mobility. That combination allows him to close the gap a lot quicker and more effectively than others at his age, and very rarely do you see him get beat. Looking at the tracking project by Mitch Brown, Miller was in the highest percentile for D-men in controlled entry prevention and breakup percentage. This is his strongest skill by far and why I think he is going to be a stud. It's a skill that's extremely translatable to every level and is easily one of the most valuable for a defenseman. Being able to break up a play early in its development and sending it back the other way is an extremely sought after trait. His long powerful strides also allow him to create incredible top speeds without the puck making him an effective back checker should he ever be out of position. And I'm not saying this lightly, countless times he's been able to chase down guys out of nowhere and break up a play. He posted a 62.86 goals for percentage in the 22 USHL games he played in which looks good, but when you put it into relative terms to his team, it's minus 3.39. It's an impressive stat, but overshadowed by what some of his other teammates were capable of, which is really saying more about the strength of the USDP than anything. He was also being played in a bottom four role as he averaged 13.61 even strength minutes per game. What is impressive, however, is his 15 primary points out of 16 points in the USHL. Miller had four goals and 11 primary assists, which led the US defense. However, the offensive side of the puck is where he stands the most to grow. In the offensive end, he's capable of protecting the puck and takes advantage of his agility to blow by defenders or make quick cuts into open space. He's also got a heavy shot using his big frame to generate power which allowed him to score 9 goals, good for 3rd on his team for defenders. You often see him jumping up in the rush or activating from the point to get involved as well. However, he doesn't really have any elite offensive tool. His passing ability is average and he's pretty good at finding open teammates. Like I said, he has a heavy shot, but will need to improve on quickness of release and accuracy. He also lacks the creativity and skill that you would see out of an offensive defenseman. And that really is the biggest knock on Miller. He hasn't shown that great of an offensive ceiling, which is why I think he's ranked where he is. If the defender can add another dimension to his offensive game while continuing to progress in his strong neutral and defensive zone play, the sky's the limit for Miller, with his athleticism being the base. Don't get me wrong, Keandre Miller is extremely raw. He was just recently converted to defense after playing forward in high school and then moving to the blue line once he joined the USDP. It's just, already seeing how he is able to defend the rush due to his athleticism makes him such a swing for the fences pick. If he can continue to grow, and I truly believe he is only just scratching the surface of his abilities, many will be looking back at this year's draft and wonder why Miller wasn't a higher pick.